Hi guys, in this video we'll talk about ceramic capacitor, specifically multi-layer ceramic capacitor or MLCC. Remember to subscribe and if you want, you can jump over those chapters. We'll go through capacitance, DC bias, CSR, impedance and many more. Let's begin. MLCCs come in various packages, either THT or SMDs. We prefer them over electrolytics because they are smaller and have lower parasitics. They are used so much that they are practically in any PCB you will ever encounter. This is how MLCCs are made. As I suggest, there are various layers one on top of the other, so that we can make it really really small. Murata even reached 100 nanofarad in a 008004 package. So a fairly common misconception is that MLCCs don't have voltage ratings, but indeed, as with electrolytics, they have one, and most of the time you will find out that bigger the size, the higher the voltage rating is. But we can easily make high voltage low capacitance in a small form factor. Most of the time we don't care of voltage ratings for small capacitances, but we do care however when they get bigger, either for cost or size. Wanna find a 50 volt 1 microfarad capacitor? Easy, here it is. Wanna find the 50 volt 100 microfarad capacitor? <laughs> this is obviously an exaggerated example, but you get the idea. By the way, if you want to increase voltage rating, you can place two capacitors in series at a cost of altering the capacitance. As for capacitance, we can range from less than 1 picofarad to several hundreds of microfarad. But here the fun part begins. Not only we have tolerances to take into account, but also some effort that make MLCCs a little harder to play with. Good manufacturers have charts that will tell you exactly how your capacitor will behave. So we have the famous SIMSAR from Murata, it is the one from Samsung, we have the TDK one, and so on. But I find the Samsung one the best, as it is clear, um, yeah, I'm used to it. The first evident effort we discuss is called DC bias. DC bias uh, is the change of capacitance in respect to applied voltage. The higher the voltage we apply, the lower the capacitance we get. This is a 16 volt 10 microfarad capacitor. But at 5 volt we have minus 50 percent the capacitance, so only 5 microfarad. And at 12 volt we have minus 80 percent, so only 2 microfarad. This has a really bad curve. Let's see another example with this 16 volt 1 microfarad. As you can see, it has a pretty good curve. At 5 volt, we have minus 4%, and at 12 volt, we have minus 22%. This instead is a 50 volt 1 nanofarad capacitor. And look at this, it's perfect. I see 0% everywhere. The capacitance is stable over the full voltage range. We can have fairly different D rating curves over various capacitor. If you are interested in why this DC bias effect happens, I'll leave you in the comment or description a link of this video by TDK. As with all other components, temperature will affect our capacitor. So different capacitors will have different response with the rise of temperature. The one on the left changes radically, whereas the one on the right doesn't give much credit at all. This will greatly depend on the dielectric that we will see later. As the last one, we have HD rating. This is fairly straightforward. As we use a capacitor over and over, its performance will slow the decline, and if you want longer life capacitor, you will pay more. Also, different dielectric material correspond to different capacitance changes, but we will talk about dielectrics later. Okay, now that we have covered all the durating factors, let's talk about uh, another great topic that is ESR and impedance of our capacitor. So, this is an ideal capacitor, but a closer model to reality is this one, where we have our capacitor, an equivalent series resistance or ESR, an equivalent series inductance or ESL, and insulation resistance, also called leakage resistance. Equivalent series uh, in MLCC is caused by the dielectric and internal electrodes. As with all resistors, we can then calculate power dissipation. So if our capacitor gets quite hot, we should try another capacitor with lower resistance. 
and last our insulation resistance that has some nanoscopic effect uh, and we can almost always ignore it because those resistance can be even in the tera ohm range back to esl these are some inductance values depending on the package of our capacitor for THT, the SL will be bigger because of the long leads. Manufacturers have also reverse geometry packages uh, with lower inductance, and these are especially useful if you want to work at higher frequencies. Just be careful of your PCB layout. Now let's talk about impedance. Impedance is the total resistance that a capacitor has to AC. And good manufacturers have graphs that will show you both the ESR and impedance of your capacitor. Let's freeze the graph for a moment and look at it. As you can see, the impedance gets lower and lower up to a certain point, and then increases back again. So at low frequencies we have our capacitive reactance that gets lower and lower, and in the capacitor will have its curve going to zero as the frequency goes to infinite. But inside we have an increasing frequency because of the capacitor inductive component. The frequency where we have the lowest impedance is called self-resonant frequency. So we want our circuit to work in this area so we can minimize our losses and get the best out of our capacitor. Impedance and self-resonant frequency will vary from capacitor to capacitor. So let's now compare two of them. On the left we have a 22 microfarad 25 volt capacitor and it has a 3.6 milliohm at 1 MHz. On the right instead we have a 100 nanofarad 50 volt capacitor and it has a resistance of 25 milliohm at 25 MHz. So both impedance and self-resonant frequency are different for those two capacitors. Sometimes you see many MLCCs of different size and capacitance in parallel. So this is done to cover all frequencies and have the best frequency response. But the graph you see here is too optimistic. This is because paralleling capacitor isn't an easy task, as they sometimes show anti-resonant effects. Here we have a 100 nanofarad capacitor ESR and a 100 picofarad ESR. Let's parallel both of them. And we get... Oh man, this is brutal. I mean, look at 400 MHz. They have a better response if leave it alone. If you want more infos, I'll leave in the description a link of this Confi-Phase report. But we can summarize with... Don't put random value capacitors in parallel. Well, now let's talk about the SMD packages. This is an important factor when selecting MLCCs because you can have same voltage, same capacitance, but different package, and this will result in different performance. So as you can see, we have on the left uh, a 0402 package, and on the right we have the 1206 package. Just look at the DC bias curve. Minus 83% at 10 volt, and minus 1 at 10 volt. They also offer different impedance and self-resonant frequency. This allows to avoid high value capacitance in a small package. The last most important parameter is the dielectric of a capacitor. For ceramic capacitor, we have three classes of dielectrics and we represent them with a three digit code. Class 1 dielectrics are for high reliability and high stability over temperature. Class 2 is instead less stable over temperature, although still pretty adequate but can lead to higher capacitance due to higher dielectric constant. Class 3 is basically the lowest tire, with the highest capacitance change with temperature. Let's do an example. If you have an x 7 r capacitor, it means it will have plus minus 15% capacitance tolerance from minus 55 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius. Whereas if you have a C0G capacitor, you have a zero change with temperature. That was the capacitor on the right when we compared temperature derating. On the left, we had a Y5V capacitor that was a class 3. Could be hard to remember all those codes, but most of the time it all gets down to three dielectrics that are C0G, X5R, and X7R. 
The last two are frequently used as input and output capacitor in the CDC converter. These are some dielectrics compared. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you are designing audio devices, you should avoid class 2 or 3 capacitors as they exhibit a piezoelectric effect, and so those capacitors can emit audible sounds. EV blog has a great video on it, link in the description. Let's now do a quick recap. Why do we choose MLCCs? Well, they come in small packages down to 008004, they have low impedance and they are good to work at high frequencies. How do we set MLCC? We need to know voltage rating, nominal capacitance, effective capacitance, impedance at our working frequency, package and the dielectrics. MLCCs are quite fragile components by construction, and they fail in various ways. The big problem is that they almost always fail short. You have to pay attention while playing with MLCC. They are susceptible to mechanical stress, like for example if your PCB gets bent even a little for any reason that can be like component placing or when you tighten your screws, well those capacitors can fail short. Another failure mode is thermal stress. This can happen during solar process, especially if done manually, or by self-heating if our capacitor cannot handle the ripple current. To overcome thermal stress, we must evenly heat the capacitor when soldering it, and without a sudden change in temperature. Or, for the self-heating case, get a capacitor that can handle more current, or even better, multiple capacitors in parallel of the same part, so we can share the current and lower the thermal stress. Also, please optimize your thermal design in your PCB. To overcome mechanical stress instead, manufacturers have many weapons. One of them are what's called open mode capacitors. So those capacitors are made in a way that they have a lower probability to face short, because they have a wider gap between the leads and the electrodes. We have also what's called soft termination, that are made with this resin layer so that it can absorb some mechanical stress. And here we have the lower resistance type. Another way to get around is by using stacked ceramic capacitors, so that we have those plates that absorb the mechanical stress. But also we as designers can do something, for example we can use THT parts or smaller SMD package. And in general, I suggest you to not go over 12 temp package. Or for critical application, we can add capacitor in series. So if one fails, at least it doesn't cause short circuit. And TDK even does this for you, as it has a line of MLCC that implements two capacitor in one single package for the highest protection. We can do other things like belt layout, epoxy covering, and so on. Okay guys, hope you appreciate it, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.